everybody. Uh, thanks for joining us on this beautiful <coughs> rainy day. I love the rain. Uh, you know, that's my second favorite, right after sunshine. Uh, all right. My name is uh, Raja uh, Bhattacharya, and I am in uh, science business. I, I like to say that science business. Uh, I'm here to tell you uh, why we're meeting and uh, we will start this tradition uh, every year, hopefully. Uh, the, so we are, we are meeting today to you know, celebrate or to remind ourselves the importance of uh, one of the basic foundation of uh, human rights, is the right to free speech. And um, uh, although this right is uh, protected quite well, fairly well in this nation because of uh, the First Amendment, but it's not so in around the around the country, around the world, and you have uh, all all seen the violence uh, that has erupted around the world, uh, based on or surrounding a very a very obscure, and I, I heard very bad video called "Innocence of Muslim," and uh, so we will talk about why why freedom of speech is important uh, in a democratic society, which requires a clear separation between religion and state. And since today is also uh, international last day, uh, we will also discuss uh, the, the danger of uh, laws like anti-blasphemy laws and democracy society, which again requires a separation between religion and state. Uh, so, uh, and uh, it reminds me of uh, Sir Bernard Shaw once said that uh, all, uh, I'm paraphrasing, uh, all great truth begins with a blasphemy. So, so with that, with this in mind, um, I'll give the stage to the speakers uh, to say what they have in their minds on these subjects. And we have Gargo, uh, probably will go ahead because he has, oh, oh. I, I'm champing at the bit. I, 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 I'd, I'd like to jump in because I have we have a social event we have to get right. to. So, we can... so after that, and thank you for coming. By the way, um, I hope all of you know about the uh, secular coalition, uh, uh, which uh, Zach and I are much involved with. The secular coalition uh, is an active lobby lobbyist and legislative monitoring group here in the United States. It works on behalf of all the local secular groups and secular individuals, and we just started the Massachusetts chapter about a month ago, so uh, look forward to things. Before everything, I have a blasphemy brownie. <laughs> In what way are these blasphemies, by the way? I just want to make so sure to be able to drive home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair sure enough. I think it's heresy that I'm not eating one right now. If you want to taste the blasphemy brownies, go ahead, please. <laughs> Well, I just wanted to say that uh, we meet today to affirm and to celebrate the freedom to criticize and to disagree with religious doctrines and religious philosophies. I celebrate all of us who are blasphemers, heretics, and in apostasy. Freedom of personal religious beliefs cannot be secure unless there is also separation of church and state, separation of elected government from unelected claimants to God's personal email address. We have seen what blasphemy laws have done to us. Women called witches in Salem, just up north of here in Boston, were killed because of finger pointing. Witches were said to be not only blasphemous, but satanic, whatever that means. Mary Dyer, a Quaker woman, was publicly hanged to death right over here on Boston Common in, on June 1st of 1660. In fact, uh, several other Quakers were also executed by public hanging uh, under the authority of the Massachusetts Bay Colony Legislature. <coughs> When Unitarians denied the Trinity, that was real blasphemy, heresy, and apostasy all in one. When I see what some bishops and preachers have done, I confess I have some sympathies for Satan. Now, I'm not in favor of evil or doing antisocial things, but I do sympathize with sinning. And for blasphemy, I want you to know that Santa, you know, the Santa Claus? Well, Santa is just a rearrangement of the letters in Satan. <laughs> Christians have been fooled for a long time. Heresy and apostasy are religious concepts that have no place in civil government. We always must ask, is this the business of government? Where would we be as secularists, humanists, free thinkers, and non-believers, and atheists, if blasphemy and heresy laws were actually enforced? 
how can we allow the power of civil government to be used by religious authorities, full of their own self-importance, in order to criminalize beliefs? And who is, to, who is to define blasphemy or heresy? Should this power be given to unelected, religion-dependent authorities with a self-protecting agenda? Democracy requires that religious doctrines be separated from good social policies. We must remember, we must be free to reject all notions of invisible angels and demons, invisible spirits, invisible cherubims, seraphims, and diesel theos of the world. And notions about natural law, which is a purely religious invention, which has no basis in science. Throughout history, churches have tried to capture the power of civil government to foster their own agendas and to feather their own nests. But no church or religious group should have power over secular government. Separation of government from religious doctrines is the central unifying principle for all non-believers. I applaud humanists, atheists, secularists, and liberal religious people for holding to strict, strict separation of church and state. The core concept of secular means government neutrality without favoritism toward believers. Freedom from religious intrusions is essential to a vital democracy and for all secularists. Blasphemy, heresy, apostasy are purely religious doctrines with no place in a free society. So I say unto you, go thou and blaspheme and sin. Sinning is good for the soul. Blasphemy and heresy are good for the mind. Thank you.